Hello and welcome to Swart Corps for round four of the Midas Historic Tour. There was a definite chill in the air on this frosty winter's morning, but that didn't stop the drivers from revving up for some great action at Swart Corps. History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport, Gumtree, Mitsubishi Electric and their associate sponsors. Let's warm up as Peter Jenkins gives us the lowdown on Turn 1. I'm standing here at Swart Corps at Turn 1, which is probably the corner that the competitors fear the most. It's very, very fast. It will be the second fastest corner on the track, but you're coming down the pit straight and you're heading off a level and you're going straight down into the corner. The biggest problem with this corner is that you can't see the apex when you're going into the corner. So you have to judge where you're going to be apexing at the end of the corner, which we'll show you just now. So you would have come off the pit straight, kept to the right-hand side of the track. Most people, the tendency is to turn in quite early, but you need to stay right, and this drain right in front of me is actually the apex of the corner. The, the curbing starts quite early, and most people tend to try and apex over here. But the later you can apex, the more speed you can carry on the exit to the corner, which helps you set in the car up nicely for turn two. You'll see the tire barriers are very, very close to this corner as well. There have been some spectacular accidents here in the past, particularly Everett Buerta about four years ago, where he wrote off his 911 Porsche. The car was going uh, uh, front over back and was a spectacular accident, but I'm sure it wasn't spectacular for Everett. With that in mind, the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloons Classes F to H are getting themselves ready for action in the pre-race assembly area. We caught up with newcomer Donald Lotta. Both my brothers, uh, Donnie and Wayne uh, Lotta, is, is racing. Donnie got this car on Gumtree, and uh, I went to have a look at the car, and then I bought the car. I've had the car for, for, for two weeks and uh, done a bit of work on it. I'm, I'm ready for racing now. Yesterday was a bit slippery and slidey, but um, uh, today I'm feeling better. My qualifying, I think it, uh, it went well, so we look forward to the race. Yeah, Carl Army wasn't a good day for me, unfortunately, but uh, we have a specialist panel shop in Peter Marisburg, auto panel shop, who are doing the repair for me. They can save the car, which is fantastic. It should be here next time. I'm very fortunate to be able to drive this car behind me. It's Quinton's car, and he's very kindly allowed me to have a drive in it today, which is fantastic. Try and salvage some points for the day. There's some conditions attached to this thing. He's got to use his own tyres and his own fuel, but he can use the car. <laughs> if I bend it, I mend it. That's it. it. He bends it, he mends it. And who is driving first? I am, luckily for me. Um, so if anything goes wrong, then it's my fault in the beginning. However, when he goes in the second session, then that's his problem. Did Meredith have a chance behind the wheel? I drove it yesterday for a couple of laps, yeah. It's very different to mine, but all, all racing cars are different. I'll get used to it. Not having to get used to anything, Quentin Willis lined up third on the grid behind pole sitter Brett Maurice and second place man Mike O'Sullivan. The first Class H car in the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloon's Class F to H race is Rene Janssen van Rensburg in 11th. Round GNH Transport, the field come. Brett Maurice and Mike O'Sullivan side by side, keen to ensure that the other doesn't get the drop on them as they wait for the lights. The lights go out and we are racing. Into turn one, Maurice holds onto the lead, O'Sullivan in second and Willis in third. Behind them in the blue Datsun is Johan Prince, who is closely followed by Jan Jakobs in the red and white Alpha. Wayne Lotter and his escort leads the Merck of Ian Morgan and VW Beetle of Harry Lombard through Renexcon. Willis beginning to put some pressure onto O'Sullivan as they exit turn two. Coming over the start-finish line and into BMW performance parts, the checkered bonnet of Ubi van Moltke's Mercedes is ahead of Kew and Ellen in his red Alpha and Paige Lindenberg in her blue Escort. Lindenberg is really putting the pressure on Helen and they're having a great race. Through the hairpin that is turn two and the pair hold their positions. Behind them is Peter Ross who will be hoping to close up on them. Donald Lotter in his first competitive race has the experienced Colin Keane pass him down the inside of turn five. Keane, who started at the back of the grid after swapping cars from the previous race, will be pushing hard to make his way up the order. Gene Milan and his beautiful Renault Rio leads the battle of Farney Kloppers in the big blue Mercedes and Q and Helen in the smaller red Alpha through BMW performance parts. Helen holding the inside line and moving ahead of Kloppers as they accelerate towards turn two. Behind them, von Moltke, Lindenberg and Ross. Into the pits comes Willem Forster retiring his Ford Escort as a result of a loss of oil pressure. 
Nikita Nell has parked her escort on the way up to turn five with a broken gearbox. Down at turn four, Sean Van Dam is also parked. Coming into the hairpin, Donald Lotter is having a steady race in his yellow Fiat 124. Lawrence Ferve in his orange Datsun 120 follows him through the hairpin and onto speed and sound sweep. Peter Ross heading through Kenwood Corner is passed by Colin Keane who is still making his way through the field. Donald Lotter is now coming under pressure from Lawrence Ferve as their pair head into Sassel. Ferve has the inside line and takes the position away from Lotter. Coming out of speed and sound and heading into Castrol Corner, it's almost three abreast with Lindenberg's escort flanked by two Mercedes. Lindenberg leads Colin Keane and Ubi van Moltke through Castrol Corner. When it comes to climbing the hill, the might of the Mercedes comes into play and Keane is able to put the power down and he inches ahead of the escort. Through turn five and Keane starts pulling away. It's still a Mercedes sandwich with Van Moltke in pursuit of the escort. Lawrence Ferve has managed to put a fair amount of tarmac between himself and Donald Lotter as the black BMW of O'Sullivan flies past, closely followed by the escort of Willis as they begin to lap the field. Colin Keane is now alongside Gene Milan and he makes his move from the outside and gains another position in his fight back from the back of the field. Race leader Brett Maurice flashes through the shot as we see Michael Sullivan and Quinton Willis bearing down on Lindenberg as they come up to lap the escort. Making their way through the back markers hasn't diminished the battle between the pair at all as they're still fighting over second place. Coming through Renex Khan and O'Sullivan has the position but Willis is just inches behind him. It's now the turn of Peter Ross to get lapped by the pair as they make their way through Castrol Corner and up the hill to turn five. Flying up the hill and heavy on the brakes, O'Sullivan has a bit of a lockup heading into the right-hander, but it's not enough of an arrow for Willis to gain any advantage as they continue on to turn seven. Onto the start finish straight, it's René Janssen van Rensburg, the highest placed Class H car, who will see the last lap board out. Jean Milan and Fanny Kloppers will also have one more lap to do, as Henny is not waiting for them. Brett Maurice is just behind them, and he will get the chequered flag and take victory in race one of the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloons Classes F to H. Michael Sullivan managed to defend his position to the line, as he edged out Quinton Willis by seven tenths of a second. Three abreast coming into the final corner, Jakobs in the middle, a lap ahead of Cornelissen and Frevé. Cornelison in the dance and locking up and running very wide on the last turn. He's off doing some farming as the others take the chequered flag. He does get himself back onto the track and finishes the race, albeit a little dustier than anticipated. Brett Maurice had a comfortable victory over Michael Sullivan and Quentin Willis. Ian Morgan took Class G honors ahead of Harry Lombard and Rene Janssen van Rensburg won Class H. Let's hear from the winner. I got a good start, so I was in the lead for a bit and I uh, was hoping that Quentin and Michael Sullivan behind me would be rubbing doors and slowing each other up. So I thought if I just got a two or three second lap, I could just work on it, no pressure. And I just took it from there, kept my head down and just try to set lap time off the lap time, keep it consistent. I've got to say a big thanks to Ben Haven guy, he set this car beautifully and uh, yeah, it feels like it's on rails, so I'm happy. I just want to dedicate this race to Franco Scribanti. He's in hospital, had a bad accident and uh, good mates of ours. So get better soon, Franco, please. Yeah, it was great. Um, just a pity we couldn't get up to Brett there. Um, but Quinton and I had a great time together, a lot of respect, and uh, uh, I just wish his car wasn't so fast. Yeah, I must say that after the start, I thought, well, we're going to have a, a close dice here because we were very evenly matched um, along the back straight and around that uh, tabletop. And I thought, well, this is where it could, well, any one of us could have won it. Um, Mike drove superbly, and thanks for that, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Something in the setup in the car has changed over the last weekend or two. Um, I could never do turn two flat out. Now I can do turn two flat out, but I can't get through turn 14. So <laughs> something I've got to figure out. Hopefully better luck with that in race two for Ray as the lights go out and we go racing. Brett Maurice and Mike O'Sullivan lead the field down to turn one. BMW performance part. Quentin Willis is right behind them and not letting go. The BMW and the Escort are side by side as they race to turn two. The Escort with the inside line makes it count and Maurice takes the lead. Willis slots into third. Up at the top of the track coming into Sassel, Maurice has managed to pull a slight advantage of O'Sullivan and Willis who have picked up where they left off in race one and are nose to tail. Wayne Lotter and his escort is trying to keep up with them as he follows them through Kenwood. Peter Ross in his red and white Alpha GTV has Colin Keane sliding up the inside and making the pass as they go through Kenwood. Keane having his work cut out for him again as he was unable to take his grid position after leaving the pits late due to racing in the previous race. 
He does tend to make his way nicely through the field, though, as he makes his way up the order, just having passed Fanny Kloppers and Jean Malan. Into Sasso and Fanny Kloppers keeps himself ahead of Jean Malan as they turn in. The Mercedes running a bit wide on the exit and kicking up a lot of dust. Raycon Ellison ahead of a great battle. Nikita Nell in her green escort is ahead of Lawrence Frevé in the Datsun and Grandad Tace Nell in his Anglia. Donald Lotter with a great view of the battle in front of him is hunting down Paige Lindenberg. Coming into turn four and Johan Prince is off the track and on the grass. This looks like a retirement for him. Up at turn five and Cornelison is coming under a bit of pressure from the green machine of Nikita Nell. Cornelison locks up and then Nell runs wide, so no advantage gained. Lawrence Favey and Tace Nell are side by side through turn six and that battle is really heating up. It looks like the second retirement of the day for Nikita Nell. Her gearbox problems coming back to haunt her as Lotta drives past. The battle for second place rages on. O'Sullivan and Willis barely separated. Into turn eight and O'Sullivan runs wide. He is off onto the infield and taking in the scenic route. It's great news for Willis, but not so much so for O'Sullivan. Donald Lotta is making up some ground on Lawrence Favé as they drop down to turn one. Favé on the outside, Lotta on the inside, but Favé has the momentum and manages to hold on. Behind them, the Alpha of Lawrence Van Zale is looking to get in on the action as he tries to move alongside Lotta. The BMW is going slowly, clearly some damage to O'Sullivan's car after his off and that is likely retirement for him. Jean Milan and his baby blue Renault Rio and Ubi Van Moltke and his checkered Mercedes are having a great battle. Van Moltke narrowly ahead, but Milan fights back on the next corner and the pair runs side by side. Race leader Brett Maurice passes an ailing Ray Cornelison as he makes his way to Renixcon. Cornelison pulls off the track and that is the end of his race. Lawrence Favé leads Donald Lotta into the hairpin, but second-placed man Quinton Willis is coming up fast. Lotta goes wide and makes way for the faster car. Willis passes and heads off to Favé. Up at turn five, Ian Morgan and Harry Lombard are having a fantastic battle. Morgan leads them through the corner. A bit of tire screeching going on as he feels the pressure from the beetle. Donald Lotter is having a great first outing on the tour as his brother Wayne, now lying in third place, makes his way past as they climb up to turn five. Donald Lotter in a great battle is ahead of Lawrence von Zale. Behind them, Colin Keane running a little wide as he tries to get past Lawrence Favé. Keane moves to the left and takes the inside line into the final bend and laps the Datsun. Keane is lying in fourth place, but closing behind them is the quick alpha of Jan Jakobs, who is now making his way past Favé. Through turn one, and Jakobs will now be chasing Keane. Race leader Brett Maurice is making his way past some of the slower cars as he heads towards the checkered flag and his second victory of the day. Peter Ross makes way for the leader, but not too much as Kirsten Fenter is right behind him. Maurice has had a great run out front and has been able to build up a comfortable lead of over 15 seconds. Through turn seven and down towards GNH Transport comes the leader. Peter Ross behind him, fending off Kirsten Fenter. Onto the start finish straight, and the checkered flag is waiting. Brett Maurice takes a double victory. Donald Lotta is having a great battle with Lawrence Van Zale as they head into the final corner. Lotta is ahead, and it looks like it's going to be enough to hold on to the position. Fourth in class, not a bad result for the rookie. Battle of the Mercs, Kloppers and von Moltke. Kloppers leads them to the checkered flag, and he stays ahead of the number 70 machine, with Jean Milan right behind the pair. So, Brett Maurice takes a double victory on the day, with Quentin Willis taking second place ahead of Wayne Lotta. Ian Morgan made it a double in Class G, as did Rene Janssen von Rendsburg in Class H. Let's hear from the Class G rivals. When he made a boo-boo at the start, I don't know whether he slipped a gear or something, and I got past him, and I thought, man, now I must, I must get away from this Merc. And I got a bit of a pull on him. I think he got held up a little bit. I don't know. I think was. I sl slipped a gear or two a couple of times. <laughs> I was, I was too, uh, too anxious to catch. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, you know, it's sometimes a little bit of pressure helps a little bit, you know. And uh, us old bullies, we've got the experience, you see. So we need to get these young guys, keep them on their toes. Yeah. But I eventually caught up, I eventually did, but I think you had a bit of car trouble. Yeah, it's only because my clutch started slipping, the car's clutch started slipping and uh, I think you were just giving me a chance. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, yes, but not today, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. 
Uh, but it was a, we, we worked hard the whole race, eh? It was a fast 12 laps, eh? Both is, but congratulations. Thank you, anyway, thank yeah. you. Eh? I just couldn't get past. He was just too fast. I was maybe slightly bit fast on the on the uphill, but I couldn't get past. He was too tough. But it was a, a beautiful race. We still rebuilt the gearbox this morning, so I'm quite quite happy. Yeah. It was really fun. Uh, uh, Lawrence gave me a, a good day's work. I really enjoyed it, and um, I look forward to, to, to the uh, next race. Join us after the break for more great action from the Marlborough Crane Hire Historic Saloons.